everyone, Helen here, coming to you from my craft room this week. We've had a bit of a, a few weeks, haven't we, of camper van one week and craft room the next. So yeah, that's how it is at the moment because I've got so many camper van adventures to share with you. Anyway, you're very, very welcome here. Uh, if you're just new, uh, welcome along. And if you've been here for a while, then yes, it's lovely to have you here spending time with me today. And yeah, it's just a bit of a, a, a real bit of a chit chat today about things I've been making and uh, doing and uh, we'll even go outside at the end for a little walk. So yeah, settle in. Uh, yeah, thank you for all the people who have commented on last week's uh, podcast or the last couple of weeks actually and enjoyed my two stories <laughs> my story poems so much you say really really um kind and encouraging things uh it, it's you know when, from my perspective it's hard to see if they're any good but um it's really lovely to have your feedback your positive feedback uh yeah i'd love i'd love to have another book published and i might make that happen it's definitely on my to-do list <laughs> I'm sorry to say I haven't got a story for you this week. It's become a bit of a habit, hasn't it? But uh, I will have more though for you on uh, other times. I'm I'm pretty sure about that. But anyway, thank you. Thank you for just being so encouraging. Anybody who has left a comment. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so I've got quite a list of things. So if I do look down at all, I've got a list down here so that I don't forget anything. But I think the first thing is my another finished animal. And the finished animal... Obviously, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, where I'm at Mousy Makes Pod, then you will have seen the finished squirrel, Hazel. But in case you're not, here she is. So here is Hazel the squirrel from the book Motion Friends. And I know a few of you who are watching have now have the book and are about to embark or plucking up the courage to have a go at your first animal. Uh, Probably, if you haven't knitted any of Cynthia's uh, animals before, then I would say uh, don't start with the squirrel. I think it's not not the easiest one. I mean, they're all possible you, um, to do, obviously, but uh, some are easier than others. And I think uh, so far in my experience of all the animals I've done in the book, I would say it's probably good to start with Moosh the bear. I, I do think that's the most straightforward of the ones that I've tried anyway. I found the ears a bit more fiddly than usual to do. And it was a different way of picking up the stitches for the ears. So I did find that tricky. And the tail, oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't hard as long as you follow the pattern, but it did take all my concentration not to lose where I was uh, in the pattern because there's so many sections of short rows and and, and, you know, I was convinced that while I was knitting this huge tail, that there was no way it was going to just stand up like that uh, and, you know, not be all floppy. But, well, you see, it does. It's, it's a little bit wobbly, but it's OK. I guess if a child played with one of these a lot, the tail might become a bit floppier. But, I mean, it wouldn't matter really, would it? Uh the stuffing of uh, Hazel was a little bit more of a challenge and that's one reason why I didn't actually give her a bath. It didn't seem to need it anyway, but uh, I, I just wanted to stuff as I went along uh, because these little paws were so tiny and then the tiny little feet, very delicate feet, so that took very, very careful uh, stuffing. Uh, so, yeah, and then... Just take your bag off there. Then I had fun making her dress, which is done in two colours. It's done as a colour work thing, but not in the usual way of um, take bringing your yarn around the back. Uh, but it's done through slip stitches, so you only ever have one colour in your hands. So I think that's a really nice way of doing uh, colour work. And else to say about it. Yes, I thought it was interesting that uh, you cast off at the back here of the dress, that you cast off on one side, you cast off in one colour and then on the other side in the in the other colour that you use 
and the two straps that cross her back are in the two colours. It was quite nice, I don't know, quite a nice little design feature. And then I did actually find four matching buttons that looked the right colour for the dress, so I was very pleased about that. When I finished knitting it, uh, it was very, very lumpy, even though I was ever so careful about, uh, you know, not, not having my work too tight. But blocking it just smoothed all the lumps out. So if you're making it, if you haven't made it yet and you, you're going to make it, don't worry if you if it's a bit kind of, uh, you know, well, lumpy. I don't know how else to describe it. I did find the instructions for the beginning of the dress. You start from the bottom and... And this, unusually, this one is actually knitted flat, not in the round. But that's because you have a big split at the back for uh, putting it on. And then you have the buttonholes and the button. But yes, I did have a problem following the instructions for the hem. And it was completely my fault. It wasn't actually anything wrong with the instructions. It was because I hadn't obeyed the first instruction, which was to use a long tail cast on. And somehow I just uh, merrily got on with my usual way of casting on which is not that way and so it meant that my yarn tail was at the wrong side for doing the uh, folding up of the hem because it's got a hem you knit so much and then you fold it up so completely my fault anyway it, it I just rejoined so that I cut the yarn and rejoined and it all was fine and it's it's rather a pretty little hem as well. It's uh, got a little slightly scalloped edge. It's meant to have a little scalloped, scalloped edge. Um, yeah, so I think she looks very pretty in that. But uh, yes, uh, I did decide that she needed a little bag. And in Motion Friends, she doesn't have a bag of her own. Uh, not all of the animals have a bag. And Hazel didn't have one. She really should have one because she's the kind of animal who does love to go collecting. I mean, squirrels collect things, don't they, all the time? So uh, so she's got a little bag. I, I chose the one which is for Aggie the sheep. And I haven't made the sheep yet, but I've, yeah, I made her bag. But I made it in a nice woodland colour. And so uh, she has been out, haven't you, Hazel? Yeah, she's been out in the woods. She was looking for acorns and some hazelnuts and pine cones lying on the ground. You came back with a little collection, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, so so that was that was lovely, yes. And she did look very at home in the woods when I was out there taking photos, I think. So yeah, she's I I'm really, 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 really pleased with her. And uh, yeah, she can go and join the rest of the family. Although of course she's telling me that uh she she's a little bit sad she's not in the story about wolfie and the button because she hadn't been born then uh so i think she's going to be wanting her own story in fact all the animals keep hinting at me that they want their own stories so you never know <laughs> i might manage to do that right you go and sit there and you lie down there and of course if you are on instagram you will know that i have started another animal and this is how far I've got. Uh, there we go. It's the mother duck and she is still damp and so she is being blocked. And I decided that she did need block, even though I've used the same yarn as for Hazel. Uh, firstly, I don't think she'll be too difficult to stuff anyway. Uh, there's a hole that you leave down here and you don't stuff the wings. The feet might be a little bit fiddly, but there is a little bit of a... You didn't have to tie off the stitches at the end of the feet as well. So that'll help, I think, for stuffing the feet. And it was a little bit awkward to decide how to uh, <laughs> how to lie her down to block her. Because she's got tail feathers, three tail feathers. Oh my goodness, they 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 were slightly fiddly. No, they're, they're, they're all right. But um, yes, I wanted them to lie flat because they were sticking up in all directions. But yes, I decided to give her a bath because, uh, I don't know, just the the increases and decreases, places where I'd done that, just were seemed really obvious. And I just thought that it, they might smooth out a bit if she had a bath, which they have. So that's good. So she, in the book, she's called, um, let's just put you down now. She's called Nana 
Uh, but certainly in the area of England that I live, in the northeast, Nana means grandma. It's just one word that we use for grandma. And so I don't really want to think about her as a, a grandma duck. She's a mummy duck. She's just a young, young mother she is. And uh, so I'm going to call her something else, but I haven't quite decided. Uh, I mentioned on Instagram that um, I couldn't decide what to call her. So I now have loads of suggestions. That makes it just as hard, I think, because there's so many nice suggestions. So I can't decide. I think maybe when she's stuffed, she might whisper in my ear which name she likes uh, that she'd like to be called. So um she was I, I thought that she might be a little bit easier to make because I didn't have to do any ears but uh oh there's still there's a few challenges in there for example the wings uh because because there's three sort of feathers sticking out of the wings uh that you know that takes a little bit of maneuvering with your stitches and uh yes the the, oh, the feet weren't too tricky really uh, the tail feathers were, as I said, already said, they were a little bit tricky just to pick up the stitches and then start them off. That's the hardest bit. When you mark stitches with yarn, the hardest part of that is picking up the, the stitches that you've marked and doing those first couple of rounds because you haven't got much, you haven't got much room. It all feels a bit kind of squished. <laughs> but, um, you know, once you've got going, it's OK. And, you know, my, my main message in knitting these patterns is you just have to take your time uh what one of you were asking i think it was esther was asking you know what was my process in um tackling these patterns in motion friends and i think well first of all i have to say that before i bought the book before the book came out uh, i had knitted quite a few of cynthia's patterns so i'd knitted four tutu bears and the mole and the turtle and a, a bigger bear, myrtle bear and have I missed anybody out? A mouse, Sadie Suri. I've shown you them before a few weeks ago, I think. Uh, so I was quite experienced in understanding the, all of her different ways of um, doing short rows and that sort of thing. And when in Motion Friends, there's uh, a very very um, healthy uh, section <laughs> at the start of explaining how to do all these different things but I think uh, even if I hadn't done uh, any of the Cynthia's patterns before I probably wouldn't sit and read all of those because it's really clear within the patterns you just start a pattern and then if there's a particular technique that you need she says now go to chapter whatever of uh, section you know go go to this section and I'll explain what to do and so I think that's that's really the way I have gone through things even with the separate bolt patterns that I had before just got on with the pattern I come to a bit that I don't understand then I'll go and look at the explanation and yeah and it, and it is just all a matter of not feeling that you have to rush through it just take it absolutely one round or one row at a time and uh yeah uh so I, I think that's all i don't think there's any i don't think i do anything else really um you know that's uh really i, I can't think of anything else helpful to tell you uh that uh, that i do i do just take it bit by bit slowly so <laughs> i don't know if that's helpful at all <laughs> okay then so I think that's enough of animals for the moment. Uh, I've got one other project on the go that I'm going to tell you about, and that is a blanket that I've started. And I'm going to put it here. Yeah, so, and I'm doing a blanket with squares. So they're in here. And so far I have done 12 squares. Now this blanket I saw for the first time uh, when I was watching Paula on on the Stitched by Mrs D uh, YouTube channel and I just love watching Paula especially when she does her vlogs uh, every day for a month and rather than October this year she did September and on one of those days she held up this most gorgeous blanket and she uh, it was the uh, Nature's Walk it's called Nature's Walk and it's by Sandra of Cherry Heart 
and it just looked gorgeous she'd done it all in a cream color and it, it had the most beautiful border and I do love doing borders on blankets that is my favorite bit I have to say and and each of the squares represents uh, you know something that you might see when you're out on a nature walk so of course that instantly appealed to me as well and the, the first uh, time the pattern came out it was a crochet along uh, apparently and so six of the different designs and the border are free patterns uh, then Sandra brought out six more a bonus pack of six more patterns and so I, I decided to do that and uh, because I just like the sound of all the other the, the other six that that, um, that she brought out so I have now done one of each of the squares and I think rather than hold them up and uh, you can't really see the designs so well if I just hold them up here that I've, I've taken a photo of each one so I'll go through and tell you what each one is so we've got gates first of all and then berries and buds uh, then leaves you can just see the leaves uh, north star is the next one I did and then flower so those are all the free patterns and then the, the bonus pack that I bought has got butterfly and then wheat which I love lots and lots of puff stitches which took a long time um, but, but it, it looks really effective then sunshine I love that one snowflake and blossom and finally clover so I need to do four of each pattern so I am a quarter of the way there with these that I've done. I'm using, for the first time, I am making a blanket not out of Stylecraft Special DK, <laughs> but I am using Stylecraft because that's what Paula said she'd used. She'd said, she said she'd used Stylecraft Bellissima, uh, which is a little, it's still acrylic, but it's a bit more of a silky feel, I would say. However, I mean, Paula didn't say this, but... <laughs> It was, it is, should I say, quite splitty. Uh, so at times it's, nah, I'm a bit annoyed with it sometimes. I think especially if you're doing puff stitch and you, uh, you, you end up with about eight loops on your hook and then you have to bring the yarn through and that's quite tricky when you've got splitty yarn. <laughs> Mostly it's fine and I think it's going to feel really nice. When, when I've got all the uh, squares done, uh, then um, you crochet them together and then do the border. So, that, so that'll be good. And I think that'll be a really nice project for taking away in the camper van, uh, which we are going away again soon. And uh, because, yeah, I can just take one... 100 gram ball of yarn I won't need more than that while we're away and uh, and so then it's just a nice little project you do have to concentrate I would say it's not um, a, a blanket for doing if you're watching something on the television that you don't want to uh, you know you don't want to miss too much of because I do have to uh, concentrate carefully on the pattern some rounds of the squares are absolutely straightforward others I have to keep looking at the pattern to remind me because sometimes you do one side of a square and you think right I've got that and then you don't need to look at the pattern again but there's others at times where I've had to keep checking the pattern so uh, and the other thing is that when you're doing a blanket with squares and you're not joining as you go obviously you haven't got a nice blanket to warm you getting grow growing bigger and bigger um to, to warm your knees <laughs> but apart from that I am, I'm thoroughly enjoying uh, this blanket I, I, I can't wait to to have that one finished but there's no hurry for it there is no deadline so it's just a, a nice ongoing project that I can pick up now and then uh, and so um what else yeah a craft that I have never done before I'm going to show you now and that is a well a very very simple corn dolly 
And I made this uh, recently, very recently, when I went to my WI group. WI, just in case you don't know, stands for Women's Institute. It's an organisation for women to get together and support each other and learn things uh, that actually started in Canada over 100 years ago, um, 18 something, I think, and then it came over to the UK. And it, it's a, a really excellent uh, organisation to belong to. Uh, the WI. Uh, I haven't been so much this year for one reason or another, which I'll not go into now, <laughs> but I did go uh, to uh, the latest uh, meeting that was held and we were having a special harvest evening and they'd invited a lady to come and speak to us to tell us all about the history of corn dollies and, and how to make one. And it was so, so interesting. She, she didn't actually say where the the word dollies had come from in corn dollies. And she said the actual, um, you know, like figures made of corn uh, only started being made in the 1950s, uh, she said. Uh, but things made of corn that were made around harvest time have been around for absolutely thousands of years. In fact, in, if, if you look at some... Uh, stone carvings from ancient Egypt. Uh, there are uh, things which definitely look like the plaited straw, corn, whatever. And so I think they have been around for a very, very long time. Uh, the, 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 the general idea of a corn dolly was that the people believed that the spirit of the corn would be in the last sheaf that was picked at harvest. And so if you made something from it to keep until the next spring, then hopefully the spirit of the corn would, would guarantee that you had a, a really good harvest the next year as well. But uh, also uh, there became a tradition where uh, girls and boys gave each other a thing called a favour made out of plaited corn, you know, maybe with a little ribbon round it and things. And it would be worn as a kind of a, you know, on your clothing, there, on your clothing, what do you call that? Mine's gone blank. Um, you know, you know what I mean, pinned, pinned to your lapel or whatever. Uh, and yeah, so they would, it would be a sign that, yes, uh, I rather like you and, you know, you're my chosen one and so yeah so they were called favours and so that is the thing that the lady uh, showed us how to make the very very simple the most simple uh, kind of plaiting that you can do we had four long pieces of uh, wheat corn and yeah it was it was very very straightforward she had uh, soaked all of the long straight pieces of corn that she picked beforehand so that they weren't too dry and so they didn't we didn't have too much problem with them snapping uh, but uh, I was really really pleased with that uh, and I'd love to do a bit more there are all sorts of uh, different ways of plaiting much more complicated than this which look really effective and in fact the lady brought uh, with her a whole selection of things made out of corn that she's just collected over the years. So I thought you might like to see the things, some of the things that she brought.
so that was a really really interesting evening that we had and we had some food as well and, and and I'd been asked to go along to play the piano so we could sing some harvest songs it was a really great evening yeah so that was WI uh, I was going to show you a couple of things that I've bought recently as well so the first talking of Paula from Stitched by Mrs D uh, I have bought the most beautiful project bag I just could not resist that fabric just woodland has got hedgehogs and squirrels and toadstools and a rabbit or hare I'm not sure if it's a rabbit or hare there beautiful bag and I and I was particularly attracted to it because it was going to be quite large and I haven't got many large project bags I've got quite a collection now of smallish ones uh, and most of my projects are small but sometimes I, I just need a bit more space and um, this one I chose to have one with a, with a zip along the top so I am really really pleased with that though so really nice so that's a project bag and and then I bought a new book yeah I really really don't need any more books for making things but I couldn't resist this one and it's the Knitting Peter Rabbit book by Claire Garland which I'm sure a few of you have spotted as well and maybe even bought and uh, yeah there's 12 patterns for different characters from uh, Beatrix Potter's books and it's an absolutely gorgeous book if I just give you a little flip through it's got uh, all the knitting patterns for the characters and then in the back of the book there's uh, templates I get the actual size templates yeah, they are. They're actual size templates uh, for making the little clothes. And I think I don't think the clothes look too complicated to make. I think you just make them from felt. I hope so anyway. Lots and lots of beautiful photos to help you, uh, you know, sew the animals up. So I have made some of Claire Garland's animals before. I've made, I've made the little, tiny little frog and I've made a little mouse. So they're quite small things and these aren't all tiny little things. So I don't think that I'll have any problem uh, making them. I just don't know when I'm going to start on those because I'm still obsessed with motion friends. So anyway, uh, that, that is really a very, very beautiful book. It'll just be a lovely book to look through because it's it's so, oh, it's just so tastefully illustrated. And, you know, the photographs of the creatures are exactly you know, the way I like to take photos of, of the animals that I make as well. So, yes. So hopefully I'll, I'll return to that book at some point and actually show you something I've made from it. And then the final thing I was going to show you today uh, was just a, a, a lovely gift that I received from one of you lovely viewers, actually. You know who you are. Thank you so much again for this. But she's made this especially for, uh, for me to take in the camper van because you can see on it... Uh, uh, but it's got a, a kind of, I think it's an old fashioned caravan on there, but it looks very lovely. Definitely great for the camper van. It's got beautiful uh, patchwork here and uh, I'm told it, it's possibly not perfect, but it looks perfect to me. And it was a gift and I was very, very happy to receive it. Also got, there's a lovely um, heart inside as well. So really, really, really lovely. So thank, thank you for that. And that will be going into the camper van for our next trip. So that's everything that I was going to show you today. And I'm just going to finish off with a little walk outside. So when I show you these videos sometimes, there's not usually anything out of the ordinary in them. You know, if I'm showing you, you know, leaves on the ground or something, there's nothing extra special about them but I love putting all of these little clips together just so that we can be a bit uh, kind of mindful of all of these things around us that we can so easily take for granted and um, yeah and lately we've had so many different kinds of weather that I thought right I'm, I think I'll put a little video together of just being out in different weathers and it's also an opportunity to have a bit of piano music to relax to. Uh, so I hope you'll enjoy coming out with me in all weathers.
Well, I told you I was going to have quite a chit chat today and I really have, haven't I? <laughs> Thank you if you stayed with me right to the end. And uh, it won't be long at all before I'm back to chat to you. Next time I chat to you, it'll be in the camper van. Um, and then I'll be back here showing you more of the things that I've made and oh, thinking of making. And uh, although actually the closer we get to Christmas, there's, uh, you know, there's certain things I can't show you because... I might give away secrets to people who are watching, but uh, anyway, I, I will be back again soon. So until then, take great care of yourself. Keep nice and busy and I'll see you soon. OK, then. Bye.